Good. Right. Today, we've got the man, Dan Barker from Elite Outdoor Spaces. How are you doing, mate? I'm all right. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Good. No, welcome, mate. Pleasure to have you on. Yeah, cheers. Pleasure. So, Elite Outdoor Spaces, you can probably guess what you do, mate, but for the audience, <laughs> people listening, what's your business like, what, and what do you do? Pretty much what it says on the tin. So, um, we're yep. based in York, in North Yorkshire, uh, specialising in outdoor structures, uh, bespoke summer houses, garden rooms, studios, uh, pergolas. Um, we also offer services like fencing, decking, uh, and full full garden landscape builds, really. Um, okay. But yeah, we, we, we do, like I say, we specialise in mainly in like the garden structure type things and construction, but obviously coming with the territory, quite often people want the full garden doing. So, you know, we will take on and manage that full project for them as well. Yeah, overlaps, doesn't it? And goes yeah. from there oh, def- and, yeah, and definitely, grows. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. When did you get started, Dan? When did you actually start the business? The business, so uh, very early days for us, really, still. Uh, we're about three years in, I think, now. Um, cool. So quite new then. So you were like... Quite new time then. Yeah, so it was it was literally just during lockdown one when right. I thought, oh, I'm I'm going for it really. Uh, so you actually started as, when COVID ha- had happened. It wasn't just yeah. before, right? Okay, so, cool. So yeah, it it basically I was I was in a I was in a career, um, basically long and short. I was doing what I'm doing now on the side, but a very much smaller scale um we'll get we can get into it like um yeah but yeah basically uh, just before lockdown one happened i got i was getting that much work in that i was just working evenings weekends and i want not see my missus and family seeing the kids and it was just got to a point where i just thought something's got to give and yeah i just got more joy and fulfillment out of doing what i was doing on the side as like a side hustle because that's all it started off for me that was was just a bit of a side thing for me to earn some extra money yeah and it just got to the point where we just got, you know, we got busier and busier, you know, you're taking on more jobs and you get recommended more and just got to a head on point where I just thought I'm going to have to do this. Um, and take the about, leap. Yeah. yeah. I had about six weeks worth of work in front of me solid and it got to, so I'd written my notice out ready to hand to my boss, everything yeah. like that. Went into the office and literally lockdown happened that, that very day. Did it and really? Like, Same day? Yeah. The same Fuck. day it was like and you know obviously there was things on the news and everything but me being who i am i just drowned out the noise and i was just like yeah i'm still going for it you know it's, it's not going to affect us yeah and then yeah i went into the office and obviously the country went into the lockdown and yeah it was like yeah we're all gonna have to basically try and do what we can from home but yeah it's not looking good and i was like shit yeah you know, I, I didn't hand my notice in i just thought i'm gonna Oh, so you that. put the brakes on a little bit. Oh, okay, so that's safe. I, bra- I put the brakes on that, yeah, and I just thought, because, you know, I've got two kids at home, mortgage and everything like that, and I just thought... Yeah, and to be uh, fair, mate, no one knew what the fuck COVID was nobody, that day. Yeah, exactly. Nobody knew what was happening. And for all I knew, that six weeks' worth of work that I had lined up in front of me was just gone. I didn't know. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't even have a chance to speak to the customers at the time. So yeah. Once I'd gone home and we'd sort of worked out what was happening, I'd, I'd spoke to the customers and they under, they they sort of were kind of on the same thing was just like, look, let's just see what happens. So let's put put work off type thing for now. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the merchants and everything all closed down as well initially, didn't they? I know they yeah, it was mad. Very, I know they opened up quite quickly, quickly but um, yeah, they closed down. So I mean, they couldn't get materials anywhere straight away. So I put the brakes on all of that and see what happened and during that lockdown one i mean where we were as well i mean the, the weather was fantastic and yeah. obviously doing what we do and people were out in the gardens and it just once the thing once it died down a little bit after like the first sort of six weeks people, people were just my phone was just going mental for work yeah everyone wanted to work doing didn't they because yeah, so, yeah, so yeah exactly so it all picked back up again and then i thought Wow, it's it's come so I've got the work back in and even more. So maybe I've you know a couple of months in front of me at the time. So I just thought, yeah, I just thought I'm just gonna have to go for it. So I still went. I had had him notice in, just went for it during a global pandemic and good man didn't look, didn't look back really. And this is the whole thing, right? Of like every cloud's got a silver lining and that because 
I remember vividly when COVID happened, it was fucking shit because we had a lot of sites or a lot of staff on all over the UK at the time. Yeah. And it was, a, it was a real head fuck. Like, it was a real scary time because you, you were thinking, right, clients aren't going to pay us because they're going to want to hold their money, you know. And it was that game of, like, who do we not pay? How do we keep money in the business? How do we keep all the lads going and that? But now looking back at it, it was actually a fantastic time for construction as a whole. And, yeah. like, the reason I'm saying it is because everyone's like, you know, we spoke briefly before this call about, the re uh, like, a recession. Everyone's going, oh, terrible. This could happen. This <laughs> could happen. You don't know until you're going through it. So just go with it. And, and like, until some shit happens, then deal with it then. Yeah. But you would have thought COVID would have written a lot of people off, which restaurants and stuff, yeah, it did hit them because they had to completely shut. But for construction, it's actually a great time to start a business, which is actually what's happened to you, isn't it, really? Yeah. I mean, I am, I am very fortunate that I have done it in the time that I've done it. You know, there was plenty of work around... Um, and I am very fortunate in doing it the time that I've done it, but it, it also was very difficult. I mean, sourcing materials. So everyone, this is what I make. So speaking to people about it, who I've spoken to, they've said, oh, you, you know, you've done it at the right time and this, that and the other. But at the same time, I mean, sourcing materials, the cost of materials that were just going up at a ridiculous rate, because I mean, a lot of our products are like timber based. So I mean, timber... Yeah. Timber went up, I think, about 100% within a 12-month period. It yeah, was just absolute, it was just crazy. So when we were doing quotes, you know, it was a massive learning curve for me. So learning to deal with quotes and stuff and having to go back through them and, and readjust things and, you know, it, it was a massive learning curve at the same time. And it was very strenuous. And sourcing materials at times was an absolute nightmare. Yeah, it was crazy, wasn't it? I mean, there yeah. was guys driving like 50 miles to pick up bags of plaster at one point oh, was, the, 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 whole plaster thing, the, the whole plaster thing was <laughs> mental i was i was doing some work at my house at the time i remember and bags of plaster were selling for about 40 50 quid online it was just it was stupid yeah it was crazy it was mad yeah. mate so let's just jump back a little bit dan just get the full story so what what were you doing as a job before you actually left and started elite mate so i was working on in in the the railway industry um, right okay before that so when i so Going back to when I first left school, 2007, um, I went to work for two guys who were like property developers, builders. So they uh, they had properties of their own that they were doing to rent out. Um, and they also did building work for, for private clients, really. Um, yeah. So we were doing extensions, loft conversions, kitchens, bathrooms, just general property renovations, really. Yeah. Um, they also had pub contracts as well, which was quite an interesting one. So they had contracts with a, a pub company who have quite a lot of pubs around our area. And we were doing a lot of fit outs just around Yorkshire, really. Like, um, a lot of pub fit outs and interior and exterior work, which was, which was good. Yeah. Um, and then the recession kind of kicked in around 2008 and then around 2009-ish when I, and, yeah, work, work didn't fully dry up, but I mean, I was an apprentice at the time and uh, it was when apprentices got paid absolute pittance as well. I mean, I know the wages have changed now, but I think yeah, it's I changed earning, a lot. Yeah, I think I was earning 80 quid a week back then. And yeah, it was just, it was mad, isn't it? So I was, yeah, I was, you know, I had a car and everything to run it. It just, just wasn't working out for me. And I got offered um, a job for an engineering company who did plumbing and electrical work on sites. Okay, and cool. I just thought, do you know what? I, I was kind of, I wasn't done with the domestic thing, but I just, I couldn't see myself in the future progressing with, with that on the domestic work. And I just saw like the site work was still booming. A lot, a lot of the stuff that they were doing was, was government funded as well. So it was like industrial and commercial. So like yeah. factories and schools and shopping centers and stuff like that. So a lot of it was very, very government backed and everything. So during the recession and everything, it was, it still yeah. kept going really. Um, Fantastic experience uh, with that. I really, really did enjoy it. And I, I actually thought that that was me sort of done doing that in, in that kind of industry forever, really. Uh, there was okay. a lot of scope for me to work up in that business. It was a national national company. Um, w and we was working all over Yorkshire, on, like I say, on sites like factories, schools and shopping centres. And it was just, it was a great experience. Um Good education, yeah, it, that type of work, isn't it? it was, yeah, it was good. I mean, I started off, to, I just went there just as a labourer, uh, just as a, as a sparky mate. Uh, again, just kind of fell into that, really, and progressed really well. Grafted my bollocks off for about a year, and they offered me an apprenticeship. So cool. 
they offered me an electrical apprenticeship um, to be an electrical engineer. So went down that road, went down the road of college and everything. I mean, I'm not the most academic person by all means, but... No one is in construction, mate. No, they're not. No. And I, I, for some reason, I just really tried hard. I mean, at school, I just did not want to be there. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't a little shit or anything like that, but I just, I was just, I just didn't want to really be there. So I didn't really apply myself, but I really applied myself there. And I found that I was working, you know, I was progressing really well, doing well at college and got put forward for a couple of competitions as well to represent the business. So that was cool. really good. Uh, so I got recognised for, for what I was doing there. Um, so yeah, did the apprenticeship. And towards the end of my apprenticeship, though, I was kind of just falling out of love with the building industry as a whole. Um, I just, I, I don't know. I, it just got to the point where I was just sick of working on site. You know what it's like working on building sites. They can be a really dark, depressing place at, at, at times. 100% percent mate. You know, especially when you deal, you know, you look around and you look at all the guys that are still just on the tools and that, you know, some of them, some of the guys that I was working with, they were in the 60s and they were just still plodding about on building sites on the tools. And I just thought, I don't want that for myself. I don't want that to be me. And oh, my. I, I couldn't think of anything worse now. Like, I've been think, on the tools, honestly. I used to love it. But now I'm like, fucking hell. You're and, dead uh, right. It, it just, it scared the shit out of me. And it just came at a time where I was, sort of looking to progress outside of work as well like I was looking to buy a property and stuff like that and I just thought I, I need to sort of knuckle down with work and do what doing what I'm doing before I, I sort of get into buying a house and everything like that and um, a job came up in the rail industry doing uh, track design and survey and the scope within the rail industry I mean to, to move around and work your way up and everything there's just so much to do and yeah the 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 interest came from outside of, you know, looking at life outside the building industry as well, because leaving school, that's all I'd ever known for, you know, what was it, eight years or something, eight, nine years, something yeah. like that. So that's all I'd yeah. ever known. So there's the interest to work outside of that. And I just thought, yeah, do you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go with that. And it wasn't anything to do with electrical engineering or anything like that, or the joinery and building background that I kind of had, but I just thought, I just, you know, I went in there and, showed willing i mean the guys that got taken on really they they were all like university graduates and stuff like that so yeah to get taken on it was quite it was quite good for me um it was all in-house training as well um which was good so i got taken on there started from the bottom and quickly progressed my way up there really and cool. again good. when once i was settled in that that's that's the industry that i stayed in really before obviously starting elite but when I was in there, you know, I could really, that was where I saw, I could see a future there. And I was, I was kind of done with the building industry. I was kind of just like, yeah, I'm, I'm fed up with that now. I don't want to go back to it. And really knuckled down there. Didn't, didn't do anything to do with building work outside or anything like that. And really knuckled down, worked my way up and progressed really well. And I was um, headhunt. So I was working for quite a big company at the time, like a really, really big company. And yeah. I was uh, approached by a small, a small consultancy firm based in York, doing basically the work that I was doing right, on, okay. on, the, on the same contract and everything else. So it was exactly the same work that I was doing, really. Yeah. They kind of headhunted me, they offered me more money, and I just thought, yeah, I'm going to go with this. It was a smaller business. It was really, really close knit group, and you know, you were basic. I was literally sat with the owner of the business, literally three meters away from me. So it was. A massive cool. change from working for a huge firm where you you know you don't even know who your boss is really. Like, you just yeah, like do, a supervisor or manager or something like that. Do you know? Yeah, and do you know what, mate? You you saying that there's a lot of benefit of one working for a big company because you learn how they do it and, and yeah. what's not good about a big company because it's yeah. got its pros and its cons. Yeah, yeah. But then you went to work for more of a an entrepreneurial company where it's about making money and it's actually just, you're with the owner so it's very different again isn't it that was it and do you know what the best experience of my life going to that business like it yeah it, com it completely changed my life i mean i bought my first property just before i joined them actually i was with the other firm and i bought my first property so uh that was in need of renovation so we redid all of that me and my partner uh and renovated all that and that kind of reignited my love for the building industry to be honest with you doing that house right, that was at okay. the time when I was so that was at the time sort of when I changed jobs um and 
yeah, going into that smaller consultancy firm, it, it really did open my eyes to sort of business. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I didn't have a clue about business. I was just a, I was always just a number at a firm, really, like, you know, um, earning, earning a wage. But really opened my eyes to business. And, I, you know, I quickly progressed there as well. I was working on the same contracts I was working on before. So I knew the work and, you know, progressed really well. Um, and then I ended up managing that contract for that business, really. Uh, yeah, so I was okay. involved with doing like the tender process and the quotes and also in, in involved in doing the invoicing and stuff like that as well. Yeah, so you yeah. learned a lot. Yeah, so I, yeah, it, it just really opened my eyes for things and I really learned a lot. And my boss was fantastic. I mean, he's not with us anymore, sadly, but he was a fantastic guy. And to be honest with you, I, I would not be where I am now having not met him and worked for him and yeah. learning what he had. Um, and on that, mate, I, I just want to point out there as well, because a, a lot of people, so like construction as a whole is typically you do it from school and you learn as you go. That's a very common thread in the industry. Mm. So you're never exposed to the business side. But the the thing I would always say with that is with what you did, yes, you're in a job and you get paid a salary, but you're not you're not just getting the salary, mm. you're getting the education. And it's it's a real life education rather than fucking school or some bullshit university thing. Cause I, I'm I'm dead against like uni, which has got nothing to do with the job you end up doing. Yeah. I always see uni as a bit of a I can't be asked to crack on with life, so I go there and toss it off for another four years. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're a doctor or a lawyer, you've got to go and do it because you've got to really know your craft. But all my mates and that, I don't know anyone who went to uni and then is still doing what they went to study. And, yeah. you know, you're getting 100 grand's worth of debt or whatever, and you've pissed away four years. Whereas go and work for someone. Don't just look at the salary. Look at what you're learning at the same time because... You, you just don't know what you don't know. And when you work in an environment, I think it's best to go and work in the entrepreneurial environment. It's a bit like what you did. You went from yeah. corporate to an entrepreneurial environment where if you don't get paid, it really affects the business. Yeah. Whereas when you work for a big corporate, you don't really give a fuck. You don't know the business. You don't know who owns it. It's it's too big. Do you know what I mean? So You just you just wait until the end of the month to get paid. That is it. You're literally working for that salary, waiting until the end of yeah. the month to get paid. And it's just, it, yeah. it's just, yeah, it just, it just wasn't for me. And don't get me wrong, it works for some people and, you know, hats off to them. It's fantastic. And, if, you know, if you can earn a good living out of it, by all means, go and do it. But it just wasn't for me. Yeah. And, and working at this smaller firm, and that really opened my eyes to, to sort of what, you know, what goes on in a business and everything like that. It was a really cl close-knit group of guys. It was, it was fantastic. I mean, my boss was great. I mean, he used to pay us bonuses every year. Um, he used to take us on holiday every year as well. So we used to go to, he used to take us to Italy, uh, scootering around Italy. It was fantastic. Uh, yeah, great, different, great place it? to work. It was a very difficult choice to leave there, to be honest with you, because I was earning good money and you know, I was getting paid, you know, good bonuses and stuff like that at the end of the year. So when I worked out actually what I was earning, I was earning a really good wage. But yeah, at the end of the day, having bought my first property at the time and it just reignited my fire with the building industry. And I actually went back working for the two guys that I started with just on a weekend and on a night time, just helping them out with their properties, just because it just sort of reignited that fire of being okay. in the building industry again. And I ended up just going and helping them just for a bit of, just a bit of money on the side really, you know, but yeah. again, that just proved massive valuable experience at the time because when I was 16, 17 working for him, you know, being an apprentice, I mean, I didn't know my ass from my elbow. Yeah. Yeah. I know, having, I know what you mean. having, having going away, doing different sort of work and coming back and having a bit more knowledge and a different outlook on things, it, it really helped me. And I just sort of picked things up like second nature with it again. And I just sort of really picked things up and soaked everything up. And yeah, it just really helped me with that. And, you know, I'm on my fourth property now doing it up and with, with me and my, my wife we've just bought houses done them up you know and sold them for a profit and we've just worked our way at the property ladder and we're on number four now i mean good yeah just, wicked I think, she, I think she'd kill me if if we sold this one like so i think this is us forever and i think this is our forever home now finally yeah cool. it's been a long it's been a long road getting here but yeah it's just, just that's just what ignited my fire really in, in getting back into the building industry and this how it all started it was all very accidental as well um my first property, so I did my first property up, did all the garden out, new fencing, paving, turf, built like a shed and everything like that. Um, yeah. One of the neighbours came out and asked if I could go and do their garden. 
And I, I was up front with her. I was just honest. I just said, look, I don't do this as a business. This is my house. You know, I don't do this. She was like, yeah, but you've done a fantastic job. You know, would you mind coming and have a look and see what you think? I can't, yeah. get, hold of any, I can't get hold of anybody. Yeah. Right, okay, then, yeah. Sort of sat down, worked out a you know, price for her. And she was like, yeah, crack on. So, but, Excellent. Cool. Right, okay, then. I mean, you know, we're absolutely skinned after doing our first house as well. So, but, yeah, it's just a bit of extra money. I thought, yeah, we'll get back on our feet. with you know, start doing yeah. this. Yeah. And how that did that led, job go, mate? Really well, yeah. But you know, the woman, she, she, she was really pleased with it. I mean, I was pleased with it. You know, I got paid, and I just thought, well, it's, it's pretty good, yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Another phone call came in from one of her friends, and then we yeah. built like this. We, she wanted like this outdoor shelter thing, building like a garden bar. Went and did that with one of my friends, and it was actually her that said to me, she was like, "Have you ever thought about doing this as a business?" She was like you know, how you've been throughout the job and, you know, your, your communication and, you know, you, you've done really well. She was like, I'm really, really pleased with it. She was like, have you ever thought about doing it as a job? And I was like, no, she was like, you know, I was up front with her, I told her, you know, I was working in the railway industry and yeah. she said, you yeah. know, you should start advertising doing it. And I just thought, I went home and I had a chat with my wife and she was like, why don't you just start a Facebook page? And I just thought, yeah. yeah, right then, yeah. So I just started a Facebook page, put a couple of pictures on, made up, we was uh, branded as elite fencing and decking then because we just sort of specialised in doing fencing and decking. At the yeah. Time. For me, doing it on the side, it was just very easy, you know, like doing a fence. We could get in and out in a weekend or same with the decking area. We could go there on an evening and prep it and on the weekend, we'd just hit it, me and a few guys that I worked yeah. with and we could just get it done. So it worked really well at the time, yeah, fencing and decking. And that's There's two things there, mate, that, that that's really really vital in what you just said to people listening right number one is jobs always lead to jobs when you're good that, that's that's probably one of the unique things about um construction as a whole if you deliver a fantastic job nine times out of ten it's going to lead to something else yeah absolutely and the next key to that is that the key word you said was that second lady said you're really good at communication now that is the art of growing a great business in this industry because even if things go to shit if you're just great at communicating you're up front with people customers recognize that and that's all they want and yeah. i'll be honest the people that struggle in this industry they're the ones that they're not great at communicating and they're, they're not very proactive as i can tell from speaking to you on this is like you know you're a personable likable person and you've got a smile on your face that people like that but it's not complicated to make a good business in construction if you've got those skills. And if you haven't, that's, that's where your holes are. So I just really wanted to point that out because I think in this day and age as well, people like to try and overcomplicate things and go, oh, I haven't got enough work coming in because I'm not on TikTok or I'm not on YouTube. I'm not back to basics. You know what I mean? Like what you've just said there is the basics. You had an old woman look over your fence and go, you've done a nice job. Can you do that for me, please? Yeah. And it's it's gone from there because you've just delivered on what you said you'd do. That's it. Yeah. And that, Absolute that's, knowledge. That, that's just literally how it all started. And it was all very accidental. I mean, it, it wasn't in my vision or it wasn't in my plans at all to do any of this. And it's all very, it all happened like how it's happened. And, yeah, you know, it's it's kind of, you know, I'm, a firm, I'm now a firm believer in things happen for a reason. And yeah, even definitely even doing even like going back through the, the career that I've had leading up to this, I mean, I don't regret any of it at all because the experience that I've gathered through doing everything that I've done, it has led me to this and I still apply some things that I've learned along that way now, especially in terms of business and how I deal with things and how you deal with customers and, and, and people that you work with as well. It's it's I've learned all of that through that journey. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a skill set and it's for me, I always say to people it's it's like a game of chess. I don't know if you ever played chess, but I, I quite like it. But it's you're just moving pieces around the board all the time to get to where you want to get to, and it's all just different levels. And you know, once you once you conquer one thing, you then get presented with another problem, and it's like, right, how do you solve that? But it's about what piece do you use to solve that problem, so yeah. that you keep playing the game. And that's all business really actually is. And if you've just got that open minded positivity and like can do attitude, that gets you a fucking long way anyway. And yeah. you can make you can learn as you go as well. So I think that's really good, mate, what you've done. So where where is the business now then, mate? From that point of the first job, it's gone from the next one, the next one. And this was like three years ago. 
what yeah. what's what does your business look like today mate so the, the scale of the jobs have obviously got bigger we've moved on from just offering fencing and decking i mean when i went full time with the business i rebranded it so that's when we rebranded to elite outdoor spaces because i knew don't get me wrong there's guys out there that just do fencing and they just do decking but for me that wasn't where my future was i wanted to offer more I had higher interest in things my attention to detail what didn't just lie with fencing and decking it, it you know it was at a time as well where garden buildings and you know summer houses and stuff were getting really popular yeah and i just i just really that's just where i wanted to go with it and i just thought you know we can do this and it's where I, I could see what, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to enjoy what you do. Yeah, definitely. So doing that kind of work, you know, we really do enjoy it. And, and the guys that I've got working for me, they really enjoy it as well. So where we're at now, yeah, we're a far cry away from just going around and just putting a fence up to people. Don't get me wrong, we still do it. Yeah. Um, because we still get recommendations now from jobs that we've done years ago where we've just done a fence to somebody. Um, yeah. So we still do it now as, a, as a, offer it as a service, but yeah, mainly at the you know what we sort of specialise in is like you say the, the garden rooms and studios and sort of bespoke pergolas and stuff like that. Good. So you're getting like bigger lumps of revenue in rather than yeah. little bits and that. Yeah. So it, which oh, is yeah. a lot easier, isn't it, as well to run? It's because I've always said that it's like it's easier to have like bigger jobs on rather than loads of little ones because yeah. each job comes with, with its own customer, its own set of invoicing, its own you know everything. Well, is... it, when, you, when you're in and out in a, you know when you're in and out on a job within a couple of days or a day it's just such a nightmare to run you've got materials to sort out you know like you say you've got different customers to sort out you've got you know lads to sort out materials and everything else and it's just there's so much work that goes into that one day so if you know if we go in and just put a fence up for somebody and it can be a day's work yeah there's just so much involved for that one day especially for us right now with us you know wanting to grow and everything like that i mean back then when i was just on my own it was very easy when i was just on my own but you know when there's when there's other lads and stuff involved and it's just very yeah it's just su such a headache to do just one day's work for me really yeah yeah it is yeah it, it changes yeah. so what's what's the like vision then for the company mate and where you want it to actually get to what, what's your sort of site set on at the moment so at the back end of last year we just moved into a slightly bigger bigger workspace um so we've just started building like bespoke outdoor garden stores so like a like a high-end shed really uh last yeah. year we fitted quite a lot of sheds for com uh, for, for customers that they'd supplied themselves and the, the quality of them was just crap and yeah especially with how we do our garden rooms and everything else like i just said we, we can build better than this and especially now like People now in the gardens, they don't just have a, 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 a set of furniture from being killed that costs 150 quid. You know, people are spending thousands of pounds on this, you know, rat, like rat and garden furniture. And yeah, spend like a lot of money, aren't they? Spend a lot of money on your furniture, your barbecues, yeah. and, you, you know, the things outside. And at the end of the day, you need to store them. And if you don't have room in your garage, which a lot of people don't really have room in their garages anymore, do they? And, yeah. Yeah. So, and something that's aesthetically pleasing, but is also, also works well, is secure and is dry. Um, and, yeah. and built well on it is going to last year uh so we've sort of started doing that so we're going to look into getting into more of the prefab work as well we're still going to do with the bespoke you know on-site fitting but look at doing a bit more prefab work with with the garden stores sort of offer oak framed pergolas and stuff like that going cool. forward and, and uh and yeah timber frame things yeah yeah so it's nicer stuff and on that mate it's mad as well because when i was younger people didn't really do their gardens it wasn't really a thing whereas yeah, like now it, yeah it's only in the last people are five like, years isn't it yeah people are doing like 100 grand on a garden do you know what i mean like yeah. probably like sunken in fire pit lighting everywhere exactly i yeah. think it's probably come from like the love island thing or something all the women are watching that going fucking hell, that looks nice and then spending their money on it but it's 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 a lucrative world really it can be so it's good good mate so i think i think covid has taught a lot of you know everyone locked down at home and there's nothing to do and people have sort of learned to love the gardens aren't they a little bit so yeah you know definitely. when the weather's nice i mean i know we were the same like when the weather's nice we'd be like we'd go out for the day with kids but yeah whereas now you kind of you've got a nice garden you're kind of more at home aren't you enjoying your, your, your space at home really yeah definitely definitely so from that journey then mate from like starting on your own and it's it's a whole new world to like where you are now 
what what would you say has been like the the biggest lessons or things you've learned along the way in, in the journey that you've had so far? The biggest lessons that I've learned, I think I've, there's been a massive learning curve with sort of labour and having lads working for you. So sort of how you deal with that and sort of taking on, you know, employing people as well. You can't just employ any Tom, Dick and Harry. You know, you have to be really selective about who you have around you, who you have in your team. Because at the end of the day, you have to trust them 100%. Biggest they problem also, in they, construction. Exactly. And they, they also yeah. have to trust you as well. So there's got, you know, it's a, it's a two-way street. And yeah. that's been a massive learning curve for me since starting. Um, also, just how I go about sort of managing my business as well has been a massive learning curve. I mean, I know we touched before, when we were chatting before, about sort of just things being in your head and switching off and having to, to share your problems and everything like that. And yeah, it's very difficult, especially when, you know, running a small business, it's very difficult. You can easily just come home and you just literally sat thinking about work all night. And yeah. it's just so hard. Don't go away, does it? <laughs> no, that's it. And I've got a wife and two young kids at home. And it's just, you know, it's very easy for me to be present at home, but I'm not actually there. You know, I'm, I'm there, but not, not in the room really. And it's, mate, done it for years, mate. It's a, it's a killer because you can't get away from it either. But you know, when, this is what I say about construction as a whole, whatever the trade is or whatever, you, you're building a, a unique thing. Like it's never the same, is it? So you've got so many moving parts. Yeah. Then you like go to the recruitment thing of what you said of like the lads. Like you're dealing with sometimes people that aren't like the best educated. Let's be honest. Yeah. They're difficult. They're emotional. They're, you know, and I, when I say emotional, I don't mean they're crying all the time, but they're reactive. They they get angry, you know. They flip off. They argue with each other. Yeah, it's it's a difficult industry to run and manage. And then when you come home, you've got the quotes to do. You've got all these things going on your head. People don't pay you sometimes, or it's late. There's a lot to deal with, and I think a lot a lot of people resonate this when whenever we start talking about stuff like this is that you you just live in your own head because it's all just up here in it, and it's it is a big weight on your shoulders, and it's it's a really tough thing to experience and you know a lot of people go through that and it, and, it, and it can take take bad effects but it it can also make you realize that you've got to you've got to run the business in a really good way so that you're not like that all the time because yeah. it's for the long term it's not i think when you're younger it's a lot easier to deal with but as you get a bit older you start realizing i don't want to fucking live like this this is this is a nightmare do you know what i mean it's not no nah. it's not good um so yeah, you're dead right, mate. It it can be a tough place to live in your own head with everything, and I think that that's why one of the reasons I do this podcast as well is to actually just sort of expose that a little bit and, and unravel it a little bit. That there is a great network of good lads out there running good businesses, and it, sometimes just having a chat with someone about your business and getting some shit off your head is, is quite a good thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like like I say, I mean. You know, towards the back end of last year, I mean, I was absolutely burnt out as well. I mean, you know, we went down to just two of us as well. So it was very difficult with the workload that we had. And there were just two of us working and it was just so hard. And um, I was just absolutely burnt out at the end of the year. I mean, I just, I'm, at the start of this year, I made a promise to myself that I'm going to free my weekends up as much as possible. I mean, obviously, I'm never going to be able to yeah. free them up fully because I understand people work different shifts whatever so for me to go and see customers or you know, have to speak to them sometimes you have to speak to them on a weekend so yeah yeah i have to do that so i can never ever say that i'm never going to work a weekend again but i'm definitely trying to free my weekends up and in and, and my evenings as well because i used to be on the tools literally 10 hours a day and then i'd be driving around all night going and seeing customers on an evening time and then i'd be getting in literally having my tea and then you've got quotes and invoices and paperwork and stuff to do so it's just yeah it's so time consuming. So trying to manage my time a little bit better is 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 definitely something that I'm working on this year, hundred percent. Okay, cool. Are you are you still on the tools now? Then are you still doing that part? Yeah, of but yeah, I'm still on the tools. Yeah, do you know what? I do I do enjoy it. I know you say that you absolutely detest it. Um, yeah, I do, I'm a bit I bit do, older though, mate. A bit further. Yeah, off. I, I I don't think it's working on the tools. I think it's just the camaraderie of working with the lads on the job. Really, I don't think it's actually it's the best. Ever, yeah, I don't think it's actually yeah. me walking around with a drill in my hand, but I think it's just, you know, being with the lads and everything because driving around and having site meetings with customers and, you know, dealing with um, supplies with materials and then obviously the paperwork and then the business side of everything, it's it's not physical, is it? But it is just mentally draining and you're like, 
Yeah. Sometimes at the end of the day, when I've not been on the tools and I've just done that kind of business stuff, I feel I feel absolutely knackered and drained. And you know, I'm like thinking, I didn't even feel like this. I, I could be digging holes all day, and I wouldn't feel yeah. tired. Yeah, exactly. And but, do you know what, mate? On that, that, that's something that lads don't see all the time as well. Like lads that, that do work on the tools, sometimes all they see is, you know, a you or a me or whatever popping up to site, being there for half an hour, checking on things, then leaving, and they're thinking, all oh, right, it's all right for you. But then what what we're dealing with is all the quotes, tendering, cash flow, you know, dealing with customers. Like, so your head is just pinging. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've had days in the past, you know, and you've done like 300 calls in a day, and your head's just spinning, and, you, and you've got so many vital things that need to happen. Yeah. But you, there's nothing you can do about it because it's all, it's all just up here, and you've got to just, like, go through each day as it comes. So it, it is an art to get right, but yeah, the lads lads on site don't always appreciate that or see that. No. And you're dead right. Sometimes you do think, and you're like, I can. I'd rather be in your shoes, mate, and just digging up digging a hole all day, or, or you know, putting some roof trusses in and just gone by four. It's it's easy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it is. The, the, there is a lot of moving parts involved. I mean, we we do, we're just while well, we're doing it now on the job that we're currently doing. So there's a lot of moving parts to it. So getting rid of the waste on the job and then obviously we've got things coming in but then the waste has to go before the new thing so a logis- lot of logistics behind it all and it all has to run like a clock and if it doesn't then yeah. we have to start we're stood waiting and at the end of the day if the lads are stood waiting and they're not working you're just losing money and it's, yeah exactly the moving parts that are involved in it and trying to make sure everything's ticking nicely i mean that that's probably the hardest thing i think in in, mm. in running a business in construction i think anyway it's it's an art, mate. To be honest, and I don't don't want to break bad news to you, but it never gets easier either. Like <laughs> no, it, it, yeah. it's a it's a constant, honestly. Because the, the jobs the jobs all just get bigger as well. Aren't they they so do, it, yeah. It just and becomes more of a headache. Yeah, it, it's a constant thing of making the money that you need to make to run the company, but then getting the lads to do what they need to do, running them well and efficient, and actually doing a good quality job as well. Yeah. But then the the problem be- then becomes getting the management in to then start running jobs as well for you. That's a really big period because you're letting go of stuff, but then you're recruiting people that are, they want a salary and they're not really costed to a job, whereas all your labor is costed to a job, really. So for me, I've, I've always looked at it like labor doesn't cost you any money because the customer's paying for that Yeah, because they're costed to a job. So as long as they're good and you're winning the work, you can sort of forget about them. But when you start bringing people into the office, that's coming out of your gross profit. So, yeah. but there are people who want more money. They've got a lot more experience, sometimes the wrong experience, and they can really fuck up things as well. So it's find a great one and it transforms your company, but find the bad ones and it can really make some damage. And it's it doesn't get yeah. any easier, mate, because you, you always need people. And, and that's that's the issue with it. It's so reliant on, on people. It's not... Um, you know, like a lot of industries have been disrupted the last few years with technology. You can you can speed things up. Construction is always going to be built by people. Um, yeah. oh, you know, yeah. we're going down this prefab route, like you say. You know, and a lot of stuff's getting made in factories now, like modular, but it's still got to be fitted by people. So it's it's yeah. a constant thing. And and this is my biggest advice to anyone: is the better you can be with people, the better business you'll run. Like it, it's it's basically you run a recruitment business, not a construction business. That's always been my thing in everyone's just focused on the building you're actually running a recruitment business it's yeah. price the job and recruit the best people you can get to deliver it and do a good job that, that's what it actually is yeah it is you're, you're right in a nutshell like it really isn't it and it's just i think as well which is go you know there's a lot of young guys coming into the industry that that you know that don't really want to do it i don't think i mean i i remember when i first left school i mean you know, I didn't really do very well at school anyway. So for me, yeah. the the only avenue to go in was the building industry because you could either go down that route or you went to university. I didn't get the qualifications to go to university. It wasn't really me anyway. Yeah. So for me, it was like, right, let's go into the building industry. But I think now, like, especially with me, like looking at recruiting and stuff like that and looking at taking on lads, I think now, like trying to find a young person to bring in and train up, I think is very difficult. And Really difficult. Speaking to a lot of people around me and other people who've got businesses, they're all in the same boat. And it's, it is quite worrying for what's going to happen in the future because when all these older guys come to the end of their time and they're retiring, and obviously we're, we're sort of 
moving our way through. What, what's going to happen with, you know, younger people coming into the industry? Is, is there going to be a, a shortage of tradesmen? I don't, yeah, you don't it's, know. it's really difficult, mate. You know, funny enough, I've had a conversation with someone about this, about leadership and construction as a whole. And this is one of my big bugbears because people look at construction first and foremost as a, a bit of a low end job. Like it's not glamorous where the, the actual realities are. If you run a good construction business, you make a fucking lot of money. You can mm. do really well for yourself. You can earn a hell of a lot more than a doctor earns at a top level. You can earn more than a lawyer, a solicitor, if you run your business right. Okay. The, the, that's one thing I want to point out. But the second thing is construction's a dinosaur. Like it's not, it's not sexy, is it? Because it's so far behind in the world of like YouTubers now who like, you know, they're 17, they've got a Ferrari and all this type of stuff. And it's just, yeah. reality is being real. Like, it's just not real. Like, it's all getting a bit me messed up. And my thing with that is it needs more of people like us, like what you're doing. You know, you look professional. You've got an Instagram page. Um, people like Dan, who we spoke about, um, you've got a YouTube channel. We've yeah. got to go in that direction because that's, that's where they all are. And the bigger companies, they're not doing that. You're not going to attract younger people. And it's a big issue, mate. It is going to be a big issue. Um, but my, my advice to you, mate, is in terms of recruitment and, and anyone listening to this is always think like now who you're going to need in two years' time and start thinking about who that person is now mm -hmm. and start building those relationships with those potential people that you do know now because yeah, before you know it, two years will go and you'll need those people. Do you know what I mean? So it's always having your head of recruitment of going. And I actually think with recruitment, the best thing is actually that the personality traits, like I do it all the time with my missus, like we'll go to a Costa or something and there'll be some young girl behind the counter, but she's just got the, the personal skills. And I would just say to my missus, I go, if I ever needed someone like that, I'd take her on. And she might not be, you know, she's selling coffee at the minute, not in the industry. But she's got the right attitude. Yeah, exactly. It's the attitude, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's the hardest thing to find, mate, because skills mm. can be taught. Whereas yeah. finding a person who's a good ethical person you could trust, got good energy and, and good communication, that's really hard to find. So sometimes they you'll find them, but they're not they're not they're not as you think you would find them. And then you mold them. And I I think that's another big thing of if you mold people to your company, you'll have a much better person than someone you're trying to bring in to fit in. Yeah, well, that's, that's the issue that we've had, especially last year. We've been looking at, at taking on a young lad to sort of train up and, you know, basically just show them how we do our things. Because, you know, everything we do is bespoke and, you know, you have to do some pretty out there things and it's there's no instruction manual that comes with it. Yeah. So you have to have... Yeah. You have to have a thought process behind every project, and you can't adapt the same thought process behind every project. Everything is absolutely, you know, everything's different. Yeah. And you know, it's just trying to trying to get a young lad that's open to doing things a different way. Yeah, you might have done that that way on that job, but then this is a completely different job. Yeah, you might be doing the same thing, but we need to do it a completely different way because of yeah X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Um. But yeah, you know, I've just uh, I've just taken on um. A seventeen-year-old lad. He, he seems he seems really keen. Um, so he's he's doing really well at the moment. So hopefully good. He'll, uh, he, and he'll they are out there, mate. Really well. Yeah, they yeah. are out there. It's just finding them. And the flip side is what I would say is because I know I know a real common thing in construction as well is you you get someone young, they have got a bad attitude, and there's a period you've got to invest a bit of time in them to train them and and show them the way, but like almost a bit of a like a dad figure or a bigger brother do you know what i mean yeah but if you've done that for a few months and they're not changing just fuck them off they're not the right person for the company like you you and and what well what i mean by that is a lot of people they're too soft with people and yeah it's, it ends up being a detriment to you and your business like you i'm all for investing in people and showing them the way but they've got to yeah. bring it to the table as well you know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's like like you say, it all goes back to attitude, doesn't it? Like you say about yeah. the girl working at Costa, it all goes back to attitude, and you know, it's you've you've got to learn to, you know, like you're going back to man management and stuff like that. You've got to learn how to manage people because not everybody's the same person either. 
exactly but dealing with that and how you deal with different people in a different way it's, it's just very difficult and and yeah but yeah again yeah, it's, but... It, it, it's an art mate it's um you know I'll just give you some perspective right because like there was there was a, a lady used to be in my office right and she responded well to being like spoke to firmly and direct whereas yeah. a lot of women don't like that no whereas again this is the art of, of communication but then we actually had a, a big lump working for us massive geezer you know like seven foot 30 stone rugby player yeah all he all he ever needed was a cuddle like and he felt <laughs> he felt needed do you know what i mean and yeah perception you'd be like no i'm going to speak to him directly and it just to show you do you know what i mean you've got to learn how your staff work and then how what what works for them yeah so it's a big thing mate so good okay so what's what's the biggest challenge for you right now dan like in your business and where you are now because i'm a the reason i'm asking that is that <clears throat> you can get swept along with in business of going right i want to do this 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 and this and look at so many different things but the best thing to do is go right what, what's the next best move for you like where you are right now as a business so what what would you say that your, your biggest challenge is now mate yeah I, do you know i was talking to somebody about this the other day i think at the at, at the moment i mean last year it was recruitment and getting guys who were suitable to work for me but at the moment i think it's it's dealing with inquiries with work i mean i know when i watched I watched a podcast with uh, Dan from DJ Loft and yeah, he was on about it. So wading out the customers who are like tire kickers and time wasters. I mean, there is a lot of, we do get a lot of inquiries like that. And it's trying to wade out those inquiries where you literally, because for me to go and look at a job, I mean, sometimes for me, it's like, a, it's like a day. So by the time I've gone to go and visit the customer, I've gone, you know, measured up, what they want doing, you know, discuss some ideas and possibilities and everything. Come home, spoke to suppliers about prices and whatever else, drawn a quote together, sent a quote, it's easily a day's work. Yeah. And a lot of people don't see that. And for me, is trying to not go through that process with every single inquiry. It's trying to stop stop it to where it needs to stop. So if if I know somebody's a time waste uh, you know, it's sort of getting it to stop right away. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can't just walk through the door and say, oh, yeah, that'll cost you 20 grand because you don't know, do you? I mean, yeah. you don't get me yeah. wrong, you can give them a rough ballpark budget to test people's temperatures, but you don't know, do you, until you put pen to paper and, and, and actually work yeah. out the price. But, yeah. So, you know, I, I do do that in, in terms, and it's trying to get budgets, budgets out of people as well because, you know, some people have a two grand budget, some people have got, a 20 grand budget some people have got 100 grand budget you know it, yeah it's just, yeah it's working out what people want and how they want it because again you know everything we do it's all bespoke and you know there's a lot of different things that you can do you know it's not just a case of like fitting a kitchen it's not just a case of yeah that your kitchen's going to be that it's, with what we do there's a lot of different we can basically build anything you want in your garden yeah yeah um so it's it's just what how they want it what they want and what fits within budget but ultimately yeah the, the biggest challenge right now for me is sort of how we work out because we again we don't really have a price list on things you know th there's no set price list on what you do so you know how do you go to a customer and say oh yeah here's our price list because you can't really can you because every single job is, is massively different yeah i mean it, yeah there's, there's 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 a dangerous road of doing ballpark figures but i mean like let's break yeah. that down like you're you're dead right you, everyone should filter out customers because not all customers are good. I think that's what people need to realize. There's a lot of mm. shit customers out there. Like, yeah. and don't, don't be a victim to you need to keep everyone happy. So for me, step one is, is actually working out, right? Who is your ideal customer? That's what you have. To, every business should do that and go, who is the best customer for you? And what does that look like? Like where, what areas do they live? Because generally, you know, if you live in certain areas, you've got a certain amount of money, depending on what mm. jobs you're, you want from people. What, what value of job do you actually want? Is it a 10 grand job, a 30 grand job? What do you really want? That, that's, that's like step one, because then you know what you're sort of looking for. Yeah. Um, and, and step two is really, I mean, vetting people. So like you, you can do it by way of like a form on a website, like fill out a form and answer some certain questions. Like, have you got a budget? You can even ask that question on a form. 
yeah. um and things like that but what i actually like to do mate is actually have a conversation with people because what you learn again it's an art of listening to what people are saying the quicker you can speak to someone on the phone and just ask questions like like i'm just thinking of for your instance mate it's of a garden i would ask the question and go have you had a garden done before to this sort of level before because then if they have they're likely to understand what things sort of cost yeah whereas if it's a uh, you know, if it's someone that's just moved into a brand new house and they want a, a slightly new patio doing, they probably only want to spend a couple of grand. So you can probably, yeah. you can probably tell straight away, do you, do you know what I mean? These are not really right for me. And again, it is an art to really pick up on what people are saying. But yeah, don't don't be afraid to say no to people at all it is my key thing. And, and you learn as you go, you know, with, with what you're saying with Dan, Dan's refined that over years. So he, he really knows what customers he wants and who's who's not worth it at all because it, it's all time isn't it like you say you know sometimes it, doing a quote it can cost you a couple of grand doing a quote it, all, yeah, all exa- time. It, yeah exactly that yeah and it's you know it, it's trying to to, to weird out that that you know wasting time because you know last year as well we spent a lot of time probably wasting time and you know i've, I've seen I've watched your reels about recently about winning jobs i mean you're not going to win every single job that you're going to go and no, quote and i and i understand never. that and you know yeah. if, if you are winning them jobs then you know your prices are obviously too low or you know you've either yeah. hit the market and there's nobody doing what you're doing in that area but there is people exactly. doing what we do in our area so yeah yeah so you know you have to remain competitive at the same time but yeah you're not going to win every single job but yeah for me mainly it's it's just it's ensuring that the customer understands our construction methods and and the processes that we go through when we work because like i said there's one there's more than one way to skin a cat yeah you know yeah you could have a new fence a new patio some turf and a garden structure but what patio are you having what turf are you having what garden structure are you having what fence are you having because yeah. it could cost you say 10 grand for a full garden but then you could have yeah you could have the same sort of scenario but it could cost you 50 grand yeah yeah so, I, so for me then mate what if I was you, what I would do is go, right, well, if it was a garden this size, mid-levels around this price, high levels yeah. around this price, and just, mm-hmm. just really concentrate on having some sort of br- decent thought-out brackets that are not exact, but at least it points people in the right direction because you'll be amazed, mate. Some people fill out a form for, again, bring up Dan again, like a loft conversion, and they want to spend 15 grand. And you're like, yeah, you, never, you, you are never, fucking you, way off the mark, mate. It's like, you know, you're never you've, ever going to get it for that. You've not even got materials for 15 grand, have you? Exactly, you're you can't. Anywhere near just, it. <laughs> but people are a bit, not deluded, but just not educated on what things actually cost. Yeah. So, yeah, def- definitely do that, mate. But it, it all starts with just going, right, who is your ideal customer? And then working back and going, well, how many of those jobs do you need as well? Because if you did go, right, the best job for us or you or anyone listening to this is a let's say a 30 grand job you can then just work out how many of them jobs you need a year for what revenue you want to do this is how i do it and then i go right well i know i win one out of three jobs that i actually price so you know how much you're going to need to be pricing throughout the year to hit that sort of revenue goal and you, then you're just tracking your numbers because it's, it's yeah. all a numbers game it really is yeah um, and that's how i look at things because then you know like what people typically do is you you know you think you're doing well and then in three months time you have a quiet period whereas if you've got your eye on the ball with what you're quoting all the time you'll start seeing problems you know if you're not quoting this month there's going to be a problem coming down the line yeah so that's the most important thing is is to really keep your eye on that yeah it's it's getting it's it's having that steady continuity of working it i think which is a is a main thing i know especially doing what we do. I mean, we're, we're busy 12 months of the year, to be fair. Um, yeah. But I know, especially in wintertime, naturally it does slow down a little bit because people really aren't looking at spending yeah. time in the garden. But on the flip side of it, I mean, you know, especially doing like the garden rooms and stuff that we do, people use them all year round. I mean, you know, they are they are all fully insulated and everything else. And, you know, it, yeah. is, it is essentially built in line with building regs. So it's like a room in your house. Yeah. So you yeah, can exactly. use it all year round. So you know, we, we do, we do do all right with them, really. In in the, you know, we're a lot, we're a lot longer on them jobs as well. So you know, it can take three weeks, four weeks to build something like that. So yeah, nice jobs in it, in and out. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. good. 
yeah, yeah. And, you, and you can forecast that a bit better as well it's quite a nice yeah, yeah. nice stream mm. cool okay so to sort of bring this to a close then dan and and, and sort of wrap this up <clears> what <throat> i just like to think about it and just sort of give give people listening to this some advice is like what what advice would you give to people listening to this running running their business maybe they're they're the you that's just about got started or you know you a couple of years ago if you like what advice would you give to someone now looking back from everything that you've done you know everything happens for a reason uh if you're having a shit time it is the universe giving you a lesson so just yeah. learn learn the shit out of that lesson because I've had it over the past, especially the past three years. I've had, to, you know, there's been some really shit weeks and months, and but you know, when I look back at it, I think, yeah, it's taught me a massive, valuable lesson. So, yeah, when times are good, they are really good and enjoy it. But when times are bad, they're not actually that bad. It's just you're just learning the lesson. So just just make sure you learn it. Yeah, good. I, I think that's really good advice, mate, because it's just growing pains, like. You know, yeah. and again, it never stops. No, no matter what size you get to, there's always some fuck up somewhere that's going to challenge you. And but you're dead right. It's, it's those moments that they make or break you, and you go to the next level. Yeah. So it's just having that attitude of what I really want to point out. What you just said there is that expect things to go wrong, especially yeah, because, in construction. Yeah, because they do, don't they? If if everything was yeah. plain sailing, everybody would be doing it. Exactly. So it's like going to it with the attitude of going, right, something's going to go wrong some at some point, yeah. but I will solve it. And that's the attitude. So you're dead right, mate. That's good. Good yeah. advice. Good. Cool. Right. So just lastly, mate, where can people find you, mate? If they want to find your company, where can I get hold of you? So Instagram. Um, so we, you know, we are looking at growing our online uh, social media presence at the moment. So Instagram, Facebook, Elite Outdoor Spaces. We also have a website, EliteOutdoorSpaces.co.uk. Um, so you can find us on any of that. All our contact details are on all of them as well. So telephone, email. Cool. Yeah. Good. Good man. Right. Pleasure, Dan. Thanks for coming on, mate. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, Dan. Top man. Bye. Cheers.